they have the answers here to deal with what Neon has. I think for Neon, we need to see what they bring offlane. It's so important for them to get some control out from their offlane hero. There's no option for Tide, no option for Mars. So the big team fighters are taken off from the from that lane. And they already have Luna showing from Mega Esports. So they've got a great scaling core to deal with Weaver as well. Like this, this hero will scale up fast. It will also, to an extent, outfarm the Weaver just because of Glaives. If you do go for the Glaives build up here, not going to take too long for the Luna to hit its item spikes. We'll work towards maybe an early Mask of Madness and Snowball from there. They do prioritize the TA here for James. And we have seen James perform spectacularly well on his mid. Mainly stuff like the Lena Puck. In the past few days, we haven't seen his TA in this tournament yet, but we have seen his TA beforehand. And this does play with minus armor with a Weaver. You have a ton of it coming out with the TA as well. But TA and Weaver are sort of, you know, countered to an extent by the Bloodseeker. So the Rupture, you, you have two great targets to just Rupture down. It might be a bit tricky, you know, you're not going to Rupture both of them until you get Ags. But you will have value in the Ags pickup now in the Bloodseeker because of these two cores coming out from Neon. Yeah, no, absolutely. See how they finish this off, Omega. Final ban outs to come. 14 seconds reserve time left to make these decisions. Get rid of the old C. We saw Van last game around with that. Very rough time for, for poor old Van. I feel like OB Neon, they've got this great pushing lineup as well. Like it's it's starting to look mm. a bit scary here with the with the THN. We've seen this before. It just kind of tends to outpace you. And Omega naturally have gone... Uh, they've got the fight. They, they've certainly got some early game fighting they can throw out. Just into a TA Weaver. It's it's hard to imagine beating. You start it to is. worry about the damage output as well, right? Because you've got so much heal with the Chen Dawnbreaker. It is going to be relatively hard to burst through someone. Mm, I think they can rectify that on Omega by taking a bursty mid... Lena is banned out. That would have been a really good one to tie up Omega's draft. Um, they still have the option for Void and Storm Spirit if they want to. Nothing to really stop that. Like, Neon does have Overheal, but they still lack control for much more slippery mids like that. Perhaps even something like a Puck with a Dagon build could kind of overwhelm the healing coming true. So that could work out as well. I think Omega has a lot of ways of flexing out the mid. The Puck is probably a good choice. Just laning against a TA might not feel great. So they might be more worried about the lane matchup there, and they don't have too much time to think about this. No, they don't, but they are going to go for the Viper. Ooh. So, you know, <laughs> they didn't go all green, John, but they're three out of five. I'll, I'll give you that. OB Neon. I I'm still concerned about Omega with the, with the amount of damage they have. Like, they are certainly addressing the issues that they're going to experience with OB Neon's draft, but... I don't know. I, I guess maybe the Viper, you throw up mid destroys the TA in the mid lane. You know, you just burn through those refraction charges. But we've seen this so many times. TA, just, you go to the jungle, you catch up, you come out, no problem. Nothing ever happened during that laning stage. And we know with the Viper, if it for some reason does not get off to a good start, it is more than likely just going to fall apart as a hero. Yeah, it has very strict timings, that hero. It needs to come online fairly quick to leverage its early power spike. For the damage issue, hear me out, Mike. I've got this crazy idea that'll fix it. Yeah. Bloodseeker Dagon. Oh. Bloodseeker Dagon 5. That's the <laughs> fix. <laughs> right, you can... I believe it's still amplified by your Blood Rage. Right. I believe. I, I haven't seen that in, like, years. So I'm not sure. But if it is still amped up, you can you can burst through. The Weaver will melt. Once you melt Refraction on TA, she'll melt. So it will it'll give you your burst damage. This is what we pay you for, Jonathan. The, the top tier analysis that you, you come up with. There's a reason why you haven't seen Bloodseeker Dagon in a while, John. <laughs> it's a very good reason, in fact, why you don't see Bloodseeker Dagon coming out. In fact, I would pay oh. you. I would literally pay you if Omega... If Omega pick up a Bloodseeker Dagon, I will throw some money at you, John. Because you, you deserve it if you've, predicted it if you've predicted this. But it's never happening. OB Neon, One final pickup. Yeah, I mean, one could, you should, certainly should hope, John. It's a, I would throw a lot of money if it's a Bloodseeker Dagon, I'll tell you that. <laughs> OB Neon. 40 seconds reserve time left. Off lane required, maybe. You could run the mm. off Dawnbreaker, though. Maybe a support Weaver. You, you never really know. Mm. Against a Luna, 
with, say, an Enchantress, that's already really strong lane for Omega, so a lot of offlaners aren't really going to be able to zone that out, especially since you don't have the Tide and Mars. You could play safe. Again, go back to Legion Commander here, get yourself a, self, a nice Dispel on hand. Wind Ranger is what they pull out, though, so... I like this. Neon, they pull out the Wind Ranger for James. Neon mid, they're going to run the Palo safe lane TA. They sort of dodged the Viper, but you could still shift this around. You could run the Viper on the on the off lane instead, and PLs will take the Viper. So it looks like they won't switch it. They will run the off lane Bloodseeker for Van. They do dodge that hard lane for the TA. Wind Ranger mid against Viper is... Hmm... It, it's a back and forth lane. You've got good wave clear and a wind ranger. You can avoid a poison attack with your wind run. At the same time, the viper is still going to be able to shove out the wave with the nether strike and should still be able to abuse that moment where there's no wind runs. You can pile on the poison attack as well. It's an interesting wind ranger pick. We haven't really seen much mids take it outside of Yopaj, so I'm keen to see how much James he brings out for that hero. I'm very intrigued as well, John. Overall, though, Superior Draft, Who's it, who does it go to? OB Neon, Omega Esports? Which one do you prefer? It's a bit tricky. I feel like Neon scaling is really good with a Weaver TA and the Wind Ranger. Even the Wind Ranger scales nicely into the late game. I feel like the issue is the support duo. Like Dawnbreaker, Chen. No, never mind. It's a Chen Weaver support duo. And Ryu is really taking that off lane Dawnbreaker. Love it. So Chen Weaver is still also lacking control, but you do get utility with the Ags pickup for Hustler down the line. It's all about timings. I think if uh, if the side of Obi Neon manage to hold out, they will scale better late game. But if Omega does get that early start with their lineup and just overwhelm the lanes, it can be hard for you to utilize that overheal here. I just want to point out as well, Jonathan, while we have a chance, this might be the worst Wind Ranger combination in terms of cosmetics I've ever seen. Have a look what at that, it? John. You've got the, oh. the Arcana, but for some reason, James has decided he wants the butterfly theme going as well. I Ooh. I don't think it suits very well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> nah, not my cup of tea as well. I'll agree with you there, Mike. It, it actually looks so out of place. The wings are just out there on the back. <laughs> That is, that is actually a pretty bad silhouette, because in a way, that looks like the dress of Death Prophet, right? Like, very flowy in the back end. So if you had the DP at a glance, you might get confused just by that visual cue. You think so? so? There you go. I don't know about that. Maybe. In, in like a snap decision, if you're, if there's like a DP and Wind Ranger, if you're just, you know, going all across the map like a madman, like you can see in a minimap, just like that, then maybe at a glance, the silhouette could read as DP, maybe. It's a bit of a stretch, but, you know, it's one of yeah. those things. That's fair. Zenki, he's going to have a look around in the mid lane, see if he can find a ward. Got to go for a bit of a dance as well. Why the hell not? I, I do like Palos on the, the POS 1 TA. Like, we, we've seen this before from him, and he does tend to perform quite well. It doesn't really take away from what the, the lineup of OB Neom is meant to do anyway. Like, once you hit the mid game, it does feel like Omega's going to have some big issues. And while you do have the heroes to sort of deal I with it, it, it feels like if you lose a big team fight throughout the mid game, this game just kind of becomes impossible. Yeah, and they're, they're still wishing Palace a belated birthday. Or it was his birthday yesterday. So Happy nice birthday, to see Palace. that camaraderie here in the middle of a rambula and everyone's high, <laughs> high fiving. It's not, it's not a fight, it's friendliness. Where's, where's the trash talk, man? I don't know, I've asked the same question here, John. Looks like, uh, oh, Henry, he's gonna put an end to all this right now. He's had enough of the high five. Senki has Ooh. been betrayed as the power shot goes right through and Hustler able to take the first blood. <laughs> there you go, John. You got a bit of fighting on the tail end of that. It works out really good first blood coming out from Obi Neon. Yes. Look at this lane, Mike. Dawnbreaker Weaver duo. That That is just not something you see too often. Of course, off lane Dawnbreaker for Enryu, Hustle on the pause for Weaver. They are laning up against Zenki on the entry, just TP's back in, and Prince on the Enchantress. So, you could be aggressive here. The Enchantress does take like level two to really be aggressive once you have the Enchant and Impetus, and Hustle can just kind of abuse that. You do have the early sentry drop to intercept the Weaver in case he does play a sneaky, but already the early trade, Zenki's down to half HP. He's gonna have to hold out. And he has to hope his camps are unblocked. Small camps already blocked preemptively. And I'm sure Hustle is going to put his body forward for the large camp. Oh, absolutely. 
course, over in the mid lane, you're going to have Jamesy there against Peels. Thing is, uh, I mean, even for Jamesy on this wind range on, it should be, I suppose, a little bit better than the TA because you've got the wind run available to just get away from the Viper, but it should still be a pretty dominant lane here for our, for our, our Peels Viper. Yeah, it's not a fun lane for the Wind Ranger. You can still play with Power Shot from behind. It's really man intensive for a Wind Ranger to keep, keep clearing out Creep Wave, though. You're going to need a bottle up or maybe a double null if you prioritize regen and stats. And Pialds, he goes for the level 2 corrosive. So even if Wind Runs pop and you try to right click harass, you will still cop some damage on JMC's end. And it's just not a great time for the Wind Ranger. Once you're out of mana, you can't hold the lane. The Viper does get an advantage. and. James is going to have to have really good rune control to keep that lane even. Absolutely. Final lane as well. Top lane, Palos or Beng going to be against Hero and Van. I think Palos shouldn't really struggle too much here against the Bloodseeker. Be a pretty, pretty easy trading lane for him. You see Hero trying to just pull the Creep Wave away because he can't really contest the Chen at the moment. In fact, they haven't even blocked the large camp, which I suppose for now the Chen can't take anyway. But even the small camp not being blocked is a bit of an issue here, I think, for uh, for Omega. And now you've got you've got the Harpy going, John. So the amount of damage that a Beng's going to be able to pump out is significantly increased because you have the the chain lightning. In the meantime, bot lane Zinky does end up dropping a second time this game, and Hustler will take his second kill of the game. It, it's that difference in the mindset of Enchantress and Chen. Right, like Chen can still play with small creeps. They haven't blocked out his camps. Compare that to the situation of Zenki. He still has no camps. He didn't deward the small camp. The large camp still constantly body blocks. So Zenki is forced to go for Nature's attendance in lane. Not even taking the impetus, hoping to maybe still use Enchant down the line, but it's such a passive lane. The good thing about Zenki dying is that Prince is farming on that Luna. So the Luna is not being zoned out too badly by the Dawnbreaker, by the Weaver. Which is, I suppose, all things considered, pretty good for Omega. As long as you hit this early spike on Luna, you can start to flash farm the jungle and just snowball from there. Absolutely. You see, Van, he's just copying it. A Beng will not leave him alone. You've got Hero taking the CS right now. Roll away is not going to be blocked there by a Beng. So they're not interested in really shutting, or rather killing anyone. But just really making it so Van could not farm. Oh, Hero trying to go after the Chen creeps, but not even get that. On the brighter side though, Omega, they do at least get a kill in the mid lane here. Solo, Peoles, he does finally get Jamesy on that Wind Ranger. But this was sort of to be expected. Yeah, it's it's just something that the Wind Ranger's got to deal with. Like the Viper still overwhelms that lane. Your timing between Wind Run and Shackle is very man intensive. Whereas for Viper, it's super cheap for him to just spam Poison Attack, to drop the Nether Toxin, to passively damage back with a Corrosive Skin. Doesn't even die to the Power Shot and still gets a Bottle Rune. And Hero snags the other one as well. And we talked about how important it is for the Wind Ranger to get rune control. Not happening for Obi Neon. So James is in for a slower start. And that's not necessarily something that's manageable for a Wind Ranger. You do want a bit of a fast start into your Javelin, into at least one of your nulls for some region. And look at Pialz. Level 5, he knows he can just stand forward and cut off that creep wave. Yeah, definitely a, a very rough time here for James. He See how he does manage to catch up. Like, when you think of heroes that can catch up easily, you don't necessarily think of Wind Ranger. But, uh, you've, you've got the power shot, but that's not exactly, you know, the greatest fl flash farming tool. You imagine Jamesy might have to get involved very early on in these team fights and try to catch up that way. And PL's not so much. Like, even if he did struggle in the lane, you still have the Nether Toxin to rely on. But that's just going to amplify his farm at this rate. This hero does come in as well, gives him the full bottle over. I mean, speaking of hero, I, I suppose there's not really much he can do right now on the map as the Thirst Spirit. So, you know, you go back, you stack the triangle, you fill up the bottle of your mid laner. You know you can't help Ban at the moment. Like, Ban, he, he's trying his absolute best, but every time I look back at this Bloodseeker, Palos, all the Chen is just chasing him down, just annoying the crap out of him. It's a tough time for Omega in that top lane. At the least, they snipe out these massive stacks in the top jungle. Really good early ward drop to scout the stacks. And that's a lot of gold for Pialz. Hits his level 6, gets level 3 poison attack, skips out the Viper Strike. But this farm injection on Viper is going to need some early time. It's perhaps a fast Dragon Lance, maybe a quick Atos. And once you're up and running at that point, it can be hard to contest. They do scan out on Obi Neon's side, but it's a bit too late. 
Massive, massive gold now here to Peels. Jamesy gonna move in. Hustler gonna be there to try and help out. Jamesy's still gonna be a little bit careful here without that wind run, but they're gonna try and fight this one out. Still the Weaver dropping very low now. The stun's coming in. They're still trying. They'll get the Viper. They will drop Hustler, but it's certainly worthwhile with the way this game's gone. As now Jamesy with the focus fire will run right into Hero. Power shot will be on the mark. So massive pickups in that mid lane. Sure, you lose those stacks, so Palos might be a little bit unhappy, but you've given a decent way now for Jamesy to be able to catch up in this mid lane. Yeah, it's an important kill for Jamesy to find. We saw a bit of the creep war there, you know, with, with the Enchantress creep and the Chen creeps coming up. It does work out for Obinion in the end. At the very least for p -Alt, he found the support kill before dying, so he gets the XP and Ryudo. Yeah, gonna go down. Oh, Starbreaker does come out. He's still alive, but not for too long. Close call there. And Ryu gonna drop for the first time this game on the Dawnbreaker. Still has had a very good game though, all things being said and done. He's actually still ahead in terms of CS against Prince. So, you know, you get the kill, very valuable for Omega. But as a Dawnbreaker, I, I think they will still be pretty satisfied with how the lane's gone. They've put a dent in that progress towards a Mask of Madness of Prince. Timing's still gonna be good, but not as quick as you'd expect. I think for Enryu, the key thing is just rushing 6 or Hustler. Yeah, he's dropping low, no Sakuchi, but Enryu does manage to trade with Zenki. Still, Hero is going to rotate again down to that bot lane. But this time, they won't have the control for the Dawnbreaker, so... Enryu just going to have to back himself out. So will Hero. Still 4-5, to five, very slight net worth lead going to the way of OB Neon. Only a bit of a... I don't want to say a slower start to a game, but it's one of those things with both these drafts. You are kind of looking to hit that power spike around the 15-minute mark. So I don't expect many big team fights to happen till then. Yeah, you just kind of want to sit back, farm on your TA, farm on your Luna. There is a bit of a smoke coming out with Pialtz and Hero, though. And they do have a roll ready, so they could try Palos. Yeah, being a great kill here, Pioles could set this up. The poison attacks and the boulder smash. It's a hell of a lot of slow, but here comes the Solar Guardian to make sure this TA remains alive, but he's still ticking down and eventually will tie to the Nether Toxin. They at least get the trade, however. In fact, they might find another. Van is Ooh. in trouble on Hero. He's going to have a disconnection. Bit of an awkward time here for a DC. You are going to have the Celestial Hammer up in four, so they might be able to go for the dive past the tier one tower. Yeah, they've got Tsukuchi ready on Hustler as well. That's uh, 125 damage, dragging down Van to about 250 with the magic resist on hand. So definitely in kill range. Hero, Boulder Smash and cooldown, rolling Boulder on about the same cooldown as the Hammer. So it might be a bit of an awkward back and forth. No TPs can come in time as well to cut this off. We'll see if Obi Neon does fully commit after the pause, but I think that's really unfortunate for Hero. Like, he was just kind of stuck in this spot, so he couldn't start running forward to cut it off earlier on. And that does open up the possibility. You've got Jamesy on the side as well. Channeling the power shot. wonder if that's going to land. It looks like it's got a good angle. I bet it does. Sure, in fact, there's only 0.2 seconds left for that power shot to, to be expended. If you weren't so damn dead, I'd shoot you again. So we are going to have to continue to wait for You're Hero as he has anywhere. not reconnected quite yet. But in the meantime, how's, how's Prince going? Like, net worth not too bad. Still behind Enryu and is also behind Palos. But I suppose at this point, he has the Mordbim Mask and he should be able to just slowly catch his way up throughout the jungle. Ah, <laughs> bang. Uh, he's saying it's taking a while. He has too many girls on his back. <laughs> yeah, to answering to too many ladies and want to hit up hero oh, young got a pretty boy huh pro player yeah you know that's that's been a call out from uh the times you've seen omega right they have called him lover boy as well from yopage oh. so Pialt's clearing it up it's a pc crash guys he's not he's not being overwhelmed by a lot of <laughs> even palace writing on it says there's lots of people to reply to oops <laughs> said it on all <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Oh, we'll see how long it takes for Hero to, to reconnect. Hopefully there's not too many issues with the PC. Not really too much else to talk about here, John. We're only eight <laughs> minutes into the game. You uh, you had Merienda today, sir. Oh, yeah, that that's an adventure. 
And there was Marienda today. I did, because it was twin human break, I took advantage of time, Mike. I mm. tried this new spaghetti ramen I well. found in the Korean shop. Otogi spaghetti ramen. It was not good. <laughs> I was severely disappointed. It was basically ketchup with noodles. Oh no! So it was all. It was. It was okay. It wasn't like inedible, but it sounds not bad. not great. It's it is. I, but to be fair, I think a lot of. I think I remember this. Uh, a lot of people from like the West when they go to the Philippines and try Filipino spaghetti tend to describe it. As noodles with ketchup because it's pretty sweet, <laughs> but it was still different. Like this was uh, like a sour ketchup, so it's it's a it's a weird combination. Uh, it was it was nice. Like the texture of the noodles were good. Um, the uh, the ingredient packet had some nice meat bits and some for some reason some greens. I I don't know if that was supposed to be like seaweed Korean style, <laughs> right? But it was not not something I'd buy again. So kind oh. of disappointed. I expect better from Atogi. But what what went through your mind? Like, why would you want ramen with spaghetti, John? Would, would you not just uh, rather have the traditional kind of, you know, the <laughs> traditional Japanese noodles? No, it, it's not like ramen. It's not like ramen spaghetti. It's like ramen noodles used in a spaghetti pack. Right? Ah. So it's, like, it's still a sp instant spaghetti thing, but for some reason it was labeled as spaghetti ramen. I guess that's the easiest way for them to describe it. But like instant spaghetti. Right. Not that great. No. Would not recommend. There you go. Thank you for that, John. This sounds like a, a really weird idea to go down as well. Like, you know, like why is it required to use ramen noodles? Why can't you just use spaghetti? You know, you just do it the correct way, I'd say. I, mean, I think it's just the convenience. You know, it's just a noodle that cooks fast. So you just Thank give it a shot. You, you like, uh, we, we have a lot of instant spaghetti weekend. packs in the Philippines, which are targeted towards kids. And I keep <laughs> trying all of them. So I feel, I feel like there's something wrong with me. Like, there's the Maggie Curly Spaghetti, which I am not fond of, because it, it has this weird fake cheese up to it, right? Like, and it's it's not a good fake cheese taste. It does have, like, I, I suppose there's supposed to be, like, hot dog bits, because Filipino spaghetti has hot dogs. Right. So that was nice, but it used to be all right. I used to be able to eat that pack. Now I can't. The Nissin Spaghetti Packs are all right. Like, the noodles are thinner. It feels like almost like an angel hair consistency size. Mm. It, it's all right. The sauce is a bit more balanced. And uh, I just want to point out again, because because Pialt actually came in a while ago and said, there are lots of, he's getting a lot of kisses right now, Hero. So <laughs> he's changed his mind. It's not a PC crash. He's still being swarmed by the fans. Fair enough. All right, Hero is a definitely big name in SCA right now. That's for sure. I can imagine it must be very hard for him to, to keep track. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Still. They have five minutes, might. according to the admin. What's that, John? Do you have Marienda? Was a 20-minute break? I did have Marienda, John. I, I, oh. I didn't have too much. I had a salad and some potato chips because I, you know, didn't have too much time. It was 20 minutes, but by the time I decided to eat, yeah, well, we awesome. had about 10 minutes. But thank you for asking, Jonathan. <laughs> Just some standard potato chips and some salad. It was very nice. Hmm. I remember you mentioning a butter chicken yesterday. How I, was I, it? I did have butter. It was delicious. Thank you, John. I, I did have it. It wasn't... It wasn't... I, I don't want to say it was authentic, right? I, I, what is it, John? <laughs> Zenki! No, you can't say that. He what said, he uh, I'm sorry, Enryu. I was asleep when you guys went to a certain massage, massage oh, place. Oh, goodness me. Hi, <laughs> Enryu. Well, he... And Zenki. <laughs> There's your response from Enryu. Yeah, Zenki's like, uh, you, you couldn't use my grab because of that. Sorry. Goodness me. <laughs> and now they're claiming that Zenki was the one who kicked Palace on Vice. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to calm down with the, uh, with the things they're saying in all chat. He's... Go on, keep translating, John. I don't know what's going on. Well, uh, let's see. When uh, Ivana Alawasi Alawi wakes up, they're straight to Facebook and he's feeling it. I think <laughs> implying that he's a fan of a certain person. <laughs> and suddenly, you know, Abing's like, I don't think he has any idea about that. So if you're covering your bases here, then just... yeah. <laughs> these guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Goodness me.
<laughs> Found it funny as well. Like, now that we're, we're sitting here watching all the Zor chat, in fact, never mind, because now we've got the reconnection coming in from Hero. Looks like he is prepared for our, our game one again. Van, does he die to the power <laughs> shot? Yes, he does. Right on target from Jamesy. Yep. I'll make a nice point. Nice kill, coming through. Yes. We have a lot of we have a lot of all chapness here. You've you've seen that. We just experienced it now. And I find it kind of ironic, right? Because TI10, there was a bit of a drama about the whole GG Easy or whatever whatever Toronto Tokyo said to OG that uh, that game yeah, with the all chat. Do you imagine these SEA teams coming into TI10 with the, all the all chat we have? In fact, hold that thought, because Zenki's gonna drop mid lane. <laughs> PLs might be able to find a bit of a trade here. He has got a lot of slow out, but the Shackle is going to land and with the Penitence. Still trying, but just can't keep up. Damn. It's a nice set of kills coming out from JBC. We saw how slow that lane was. Going back to your point, Mike, I, I feel like for C, it's just part of the game, right? Like, it, it's yeah. just how we play. All chat comes through, and it's not even like trash talk there, right? Like, they're just ribbing each other, but not about the game. They're not commenting on how their play style is coming through. They just have personal jokes, and it's just because everyone's so close. We see that with, you know, M Motivate Trust with a lot of teams, with Jackie specifically. He has Indonesian Radiance talk coming his way because of experience, so it just shows you how how close the region is, almost on a friendly matter. Like, there, there might be some squabbles at the back line, but overall, you know, we're all in the same trip. And pro Dota, pro Dota, or at least the players are, and they all kind of get along to a certain extent. Absolutely. Radiance bottom tower the uh, the Giga attack. Chat way, John. Dyer's the chat way, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. You wouldn't have that in Europe, John. In Europe, you say one all chat line, they get very upset over there, let me tell you. <laughs> over here, you just have you know a full-fledged conversation. Yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of goes back to Arkosh, right? Like, Arkosh also does that, which is why we love watching Arkosh in NA. Because yeah. they bring some of that sea spirit, and it's always fun to see. Absolutely. Some of the teams didn't appreciate it in NA, if I remember correctly. But, you know, who cares about them, John? Hustler, gonna be in trouble. Omega, looking to move in. Big smoke up, Palos, he's gonna get ruptured. TP is there, can they cancel on time? Ooh. You bet your ass they can. The roll is there, it's follow up stun, but can they finish him? The solar guiding to heal him up. Palos, he's still being chased down by this Viper. Maybe they can get him, but now Peels is in trouble. Refraction is out, Palos, he is still running. He'll turn around, finally ends up going down, but can they find more? Prince, he'll drop the Eclipse now. Enryu, he's gonna drop low on the Dawnbreaker, but not low enough to die. Shackle out Jamesy, wants to turn it back around. Onto the Bloodseeker, blood right there. Enryu's trying to run, he might make it, but no. Van does get the kill in the end. But can Van get out? Jamesy out of mana. They do not have a way to cancel TP and they can't power shot. So Van will be fine and Hustler. Bit late on the arcane ring usage, sir. Don't know if it was on cooldown. But it may have been enough if it was off cooldown. Yeah, but it's a great fight for Omega. They have the Luna rotate in early, use that eclipse to great effect. Uh, Prince did actually go to max out Lucent Beam. So it does make sense to show up, leverage that spell in an early team fight and build up. They managed to kill the big target in Palos' TA, slowing down the timing to the Desolator and just kind of building up. There is still an issue of damage as we are seeing the overheal from Obi Neon. So they will have to find an answer to that. And it looks like Van will go for the uh, Spirit Vessel. So at least taking off some of that regen true with the active. That's going to be very impactful once it's up for Van. Not too far off, just needs the Vit Booster. So once that's up, it should be easier to kill off Palos. Like if they managed to brisk Palos earlier, I think they could have cleaned up a lot more heroes on Omega's side. But the healing is still in play here for Obi Neon. So a lot of back and forth there. Still holding on to a slight lead on Obi Neon's side, but Prince has managed to take over in net worth. And that Luna is still going to just keep accelerating. He has a very protected triangle area that Obi Neon hasn't really managed to sneak into yet. A bit of a quiet period, though I do hear a Solar Guardian coming in. Enryu getting very aggressive. He does have the help of Hustler, and it looks like they found Prince. All right, so Prince drops. Peels is going to rotate, so you should at least find a Dawnbreaker kill here. But it's certainly not going to be worth the trade for the Luna. No. Man, that's a massive pickup for Obi-Neon, and they just overextend a bit on Omega to back up.
not quite coming out in time. And we are just talking about how great of a time Prince was set up for. That does give some room for Palos to keep building up. One Mithril Hammer away from the Desolator. So our TA is going to hit that major spike where the side blades are just going to be flying around. The minus armor strat's going to be in play with your Weaver around as well with a Swarm. And that's when things can get a bit dicey for Omega. They need more damage to fly through. And they need to be able to fight against that massive sustain Ubnion has. And they have to protect Prince a little bit more. They will line up for the mid shove in, but Enryu and Hustler are around. Roll in, Hero gonna be there. Oh, that's a great stun out, Zenki. Amazing micro with the Centaur. Catches out Enryu in the backside. Eventually, though, can they get him? He is gonna drop appeals. He's in trouble now. He'll just get chased down by Jamesy. They'll get the Viper kill, and now Van, he is stuck in a very awkward position. And will be the second to drop. So Obi Neon. It was a rough start to the team fight, but they do manage to turn it. They'll make their way into that mid tier one tower. They found two cores for one core. They're still going though. And certainly so. They saw Zenki. Hustler's gonna try and get some form of damage off. A little bit challenging, however, a shackle out. Hero gets taken down by Jamesy. Zenki. Oh, he's going to keep running and he will survive, but they cannot protect the mid tier one tower. Man, that, that's just unfortunate. The roll came out, the shackle was chasing, and it latched onto Prince as well. <laughs> so, Jamesy just managed to clean up. Good set of kills, good objective to take. Obi Neon open up the map. This will allow them to dip into the triangle a little bit easier. They do have that forward ward, but it's about to expire. But they take control of the bot room. They cut out more farm resources for Prince. He's going to have to play up top. They are protected by one OBS, but the smoke's coming through from Obi Neon. They are. Mother wind speeds my steps. Shackle, oh, barely does not latch. That looked weird to me too, the, the, John. I thought that they easily had the angle there, but apparently not. Nevertheless, it wouldn't have mattered because Obi Neon are on the retreat and Omega are the ones trying to get aggressive. You can see Obi Neon, they're trying to not allow this jungle to be taken, even though it is theoretically Omega's now. But I suppose without the mid T1 tower being taken down for Omega, they're not exactly welcome here. Hustle are going to try and apply that pressure as mid lane, they found the Viper. Henry on the Dawnbreaker doing some great work with Jamesy. That's another great pick off for them. Yeah, and Envy is getting pretty darn big on the Dawnbreaker. Matching the farm of JMC, has the Echo Saber up, rushing the BKB. So it's going to be hard to pin down this Frontliner once those items are up. They're always going to have to watch that Solar Guardian use. It looks like Envy is always willing to go for that global gank when possible. And Omega doesn't have the response to really save from that. 5k lead for Obi Neon, 9 to 15. They still keep control in the bot jungle. They're still buying out space for Palos to farm. Desolator up and running on our TA, BKB to follow. And the damage output on OB Neon start to skyrocket here, Mike. Especially, again, if they manage to land the swarm in a big way, the TA will just rip everyone to shreds. And Omega still has no way of stopping that. Like, there's no Heaven's Halberd on Van. He's rushing the uh, Blade Mail after the Spirit Vessel. So the TA, the Wind Ranger, and to an extent, even the... Even the Dawnbreaker is going to be able to get hits off, which will be troublesome for Omega. They're not the highest armored cores in front here, despite being relatively tanky, all things considered. Yeah. Omega. Back into that die jungle they go. Still unable to secure that mid tier one as of yet. And Ryu and Hustler. Hang around. Top lane, Prince. He's he spotted here by Hustler. Of course, Prince sees him too, but they can't really catch the Weaver at the moment. Although Hustler may be getting a little bit greedy here because Hero is around. Misses the roll, but gets the silence off. And Prince might be able to burst him down, but no. They have the time lapse. Roll. Oh, it's not on the mark. Just barely off. Yeah, it's a missed opportunity. Hustler just wasting some time top, and that does kind of split up Omega. If they do get collapsed on mid, that could be a really good fight for Neon. Zenki. Let's get hit by Enryu. Power shot will be enough. But they've got the rupture blood right out, so Enryu should eventually go down. He tried to pop the Solar Guardian, but it did not come out. 
the silence was there to cancel it. In the bright side, though, they do get the opposing offlaner. So, all things being said and done, still a better trade for OB Neon. Oh, they even got the buyback committed by Zenki. That's massive. Like, they still went out on OB Neon's end. They still managed to apply this pressure onto mid. They've got the Atos up on Hustler. So they can just lock someone down, go for a play right now. They know there's no rupture. Could be really nice to commit, but Omega are showing all here is mid. Still, Neon, they've got the DD still running for a bit more here. Jamesy, Shackle out, does latch onto a tree. Roll immediately up from Hero. Silence is there. They might have the Wind Ranger. No saves coming in quite yet, but Jamesy, he's just going to save himself. Just Wind runs away. Earn up to heal him up. Blood right, not going to be enough either. Hustler, he'll be just fine. They are still trying to get this Wind Ranger. Jamesy, though, still just kind of running in circles. Whoa. Get the shackle off onto the Bloodseeker van. He's going to drop it. Jamesy, what? he is still not dead. Eventually, they'll get him. Surely. Surely he dies. No. Oh, he survives through it all. Oh, the humanity. Jamesy, Jamesy, Jamesy. The overhealing. It's just so much heal. They have the mech running on Abang. They've got the urn on Hustler. They just keep piling on. And the damage just isn't enough from Omega yet. And even with the Spirit Vessel up, you're out of charges. You need to find some kills on Omega to start building up on that to cancel out the heals. And Neon with that massive win. They could line up for Roshan. They're kind of posturing around the area. We do have the damage with the TA. This is that timing. Desolator, BKB ready to go. Not going to take long for Roshan to fall. Indeed. Roshan. Can go down extremely fast. My goodness. It's insane amounts of damage coming out from OB Neon. All this minus armor. 10k net with advantage. Now, John, we talked about this during the draft. This is very problematic now for Omega. With their draft, it seems like they are going to be just solely reliant on this Luna. And Prince is still behind the TA and probably will be for quite a while more. You're starting to hit that real big power spike for OB now where they'll start to really just shove down objectives. <laughs> just wonder whether o Omega can really get through this storm that's coming. They can still hold high ground really well if it comes down to that, but uh, Hero? Yeah, in trouble. He's going to be able to roll away. You were saying, John. Yeah, they, they can hold out high ground once this uh, Crystalis, maybe into the Daedalus with the Ag Shards up on Prince. So they can keep these shoving waves, but I think taking fights outside right now is very risky. Like, you've got the Athos up in Peolds and the Travel, so he's very fast, but the damage from the Viper is just not there. He's just not scaling. Does have the Metashal to amp up his spell damage just a bit, but even then, with having to deal with Reflection, Refraction having to deal with global heals coming through from both the Chen and the Dawnbreaker, it is a lot. And once with a BKB up on Palos, a lot of your magical damage just simply won't go true. Omega will smoke up his 5 though, they've got Prince in for this fight. It is fairly blind, they've only got that laning ward. And no other source of information in the map makes it hard for them to find a big target. They're going to head up top now. I mean, they, they see some heroes around, but the team fight is still not going to be very easy. You've still got all those big heals up. The Solar Guardian, the Hand of God, it's all there. Omega, they've got the high ground. They'll see Palos. It'd be a great way to start, but Palos, he's got vision of the high ground as well. They'll jump in onto Van, right on the Bloodseeker. Rupture's there on Enryu, but he won't mind. He'll happily just walk away, and Hero will be the second one to fall. In fact, are we going to find more? Oh, it's just Hustler. Just being such a nuisance. Look at this bait coming up from Hustler. He'll survive through all the Eclipse damage, and they just can't kill anyone. They'll end up losing Zenki on the Enchantress. Just the confidence from this Weaver. Knowing he will not die. He is just too durable. And again, that global heal comes through. He has time lapse. The burst damage is just not there with the lineup of Omega. They lose their top tier too. Palos gets all the space he needs to get that done. He's got his next item flying in as well. You've got pretty much the Ags done on Hustle. Just about five of them pulled away. So you're, you're going to have to worry about time lapse on allied heroes as well. And Palos with the Ags means that he's going to be all over the map. The traps will just come in. He can look for the ganks as he sees fit. And he's going now. Absolutely. Here we go. Pioz, he's going to be all right. 
least for now, but the first damage from this TA is just skyrocketing now. You've, you're nowhere near farmed enough yet on Prince to really be able to fight back with your team. Though, considering how the game's gone, he's kind of got no choice but to try and fight with his team. It's all about holding that high ground as they're going to try and go after Hustler. He holds. Going to get rid of Atos himself, and now the Focus Fire. They read the movement. Hustler, he's just been bait over and over again this game. I, I feel like if you're Omega, you just leave this insect alone. Just don't touch him. Yeah, he, you can't squish him down. And you know Obi Neon at this point are just playing behind him. Hero's still jumping in though. They kick him back, but he's not going to get to the high ground. They're rupturing him up. Look at the hills Ooh. coming in and the shackles. Lands onto two from Jamesy. That'll be Vanguard as well. What do you do? Zenki, he's going to get dived into the T3 tower. Palos deletes Prince. You may just want to call it now. Because this game is over. Pretty much. You're just not set up on your Luna to counteract the TA. 5k for difference. That is a major item between Palos and Prince. That Prince will not have. Ags up on Hustla. Time lapse for allies. They're just looking to scout the fountain. As they take bot, they can take mid, they can take top. Go for the mega creeps. They will respect that respawn to short, but even with a respawn coming up, the defense potential from Mega isn't there. They don't have the Ag Shard yet on Prince, so they can't even just spam Lucent Beam from the back line. Now, Palos, he's only got 15 seconds of the Aegis timing left, so he may decide not to go for the final lane of Barracks, but I mean, with 25k net worth lead ahead, you, I don't think the Aegis really matters at this point. No B Neon, they seem to agree. Omega, this might be just the last ditch team fight. So after this, you haven't really got much else going for you. Aegis will expire. The roll in is going to be onto Enryu. Rupture around as well. They want to burst down the door break, but the time lapse. The Ag's time lapse. In fact, Enryu, he's going to be able to PKB TP out of there. They cannot kill anyone. One lane of barracks left. Here comes the Solar Guardian right back in onto Zenki. They'll get him again. And now the shackles. Jamesy into the double Starbreaker. And here comes the Mel Strikes. Let it end. Let the torture end. Uh, it's overwhelming from OB Neon. Omega, they had a very specific timing with this lineup. They couldn't meet it. And we were talking about burst damage. You know, Van, he went for a very conservative build, usual build, Spirit Vessel. Maybe a Dagon would have fixed it. Who knows at this point, but he's not going to live through this one. No, certainly not. It'll be a full team wipe. They've got their supports up now, so maybe they could keep trying to delay. I think it's about that time you just have a conversation with each other and try to figure out what <laughs> figure out what went wrong as the gust. Trying to push Senki out of there. T4 towers to drop. Onto the ancient they go. Henry Yu wants to go for a bit of a fountain dive in. I don't know, that's a bit risky. Henry Yu, he's gonna drop to it. The time lapse is not there in time. No, never mind, he actually survived. Zenki was the one to drop. Palos will barely survive. No, never mind. He's gone as well. Jamesy will drop. They have protected the Ancient in some sense, but there's the GG call. They've had enough. And so Obi Neon, quite a convincing game number one going their way. Yeah, they managed to play strong. They get these. They managed to make the overhealing work. I didn't quite believe it when they went with Dawnbreaker Chen as an opening. But the control was lacking from Omega. They went with Viper, they went with Bloodseeker. Very early tempo-based heroes. And they did have a decent enough start, but not enough to get that early advantage. Both of these heroes need to snowball. And Obi Neon just managed to make it work. You know, they, they build up, they give Palo space, they hit this Desolator and Dragonlance timing that just overwhelmed the side of Omega. And Neon just managed to run from there. I think for Omega's side, it's a bit of a drafting issue. Like, they did have really strong supports with the Earth Spirit and the Ench, but I think they're poor picks in this, this case, the Bloodseeker to counteract, say, the TA and Wind Ranger, the Viper to counteract the TA as well. We're very specific targeted picks. And you mentioned it before, Mike, when, when you're, like, say, a more inexperienced team going up a more veteran team, and yep. you kind of draft against them in instead of drafting to your strengths, it can fall flat because the enemy team will know how to counteract that. So I think that's something Omega will have to consider in their next game. Okay, we're going to head to a short 10 minute break and right after that 10 minute break, we're going to be back with game number two between OB Neon and Omega Esports. <laughs> 